Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. This is a super special edition. As you can see, we out of Will Willing Hills. We out here in D.C., nation's <laughs> capital. Yes, sir. Capital One Arena, home of the Wizards. Old practice court where you guys to put a ton of work in. Got to thank the Wizards staff and crew and everybody for, for blessing us and lacing us and allowing us to be here. Throwback night. Throwback. They, they showing love to the uh, original big three in mm -hmm. D.C. But uh, we got a super special guest. Needs no introduction. One of the smoothest forwards the game has ever seen. McDonald's All-American, College Player of the Year at UNC, two-time All-Star, 16-year NBA vet, and now is the Wizards Senior Director of Pro Personnel, Antoine Jameson. What's going on, man? We appreciate you pulling oh, up. Man, thanks, thanks for having me, man. It's a, good, it's a joy, especially when I get an opportunity to talk with this guy right here. So um, it's been some fun times the last 24 hours, so it's been great. Did they just make up that, that uh, position? That didn't even sound like a real position. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, the way they work in me, it's a real position. <laughs> oh, they go, they, you know, you know that, that's, that's what I love about organizations when they really like try to give back to yeah. players who's played. They they they, they have make up. They yeah. have figure it out. Yeah. You know, um, because it's not traditional. Your path is to the general manager spot. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that the goal? That's the goal. Okay. You know, I've uh, talking earlier. When I was making a decision if I was going to still play or not, I didn't know what I was going to do. I've always been on somebody's schedule since, you know, mm -hmm. middle school yeah. with practice and things of that nature. So I, originally I was just going to take some time off just to spend time with the family. But just by being who I was, being a professional, doing things and opportunity presenting itself, and it just, you know, created other opportunities. And throughout that whole process, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Was it being in the media? And then I started the scouting aspect, and I just gravitated to being behind the scenes, trying to figure out how to put the pieces together mm -hmm. of a successful team, a championship caliber team. And just slowly but surely, being out there on the road, scouting talent, people in high positions, you know, seeing the work ethic, and they was like, you know, you'll, you'll be good at this. And uh, I love it. I love you know, watching the game. If I wasn't doing this, I'd still be watching the game. And now I'm in a position where um, the thing I like about it, because I've been in a certain situation before where I have this title, I have this job, but my voice wasn't being heard. And it's like, okay, you got the job just because of former player or whatever the situation is. But now in this position, my voice is heard. They really listen to my, my thoughts, you know, my input. And that's all you want. You mm -hmm. want to be valued. And I'm in a situation where I am being valued uh, across the league. I think people recognize what I can bring to the table. And uh, it's been a, a fun journey. You know, so many of our former teammates, so many former players stop playing the game of basketball. And they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out well, where's the next chapter. And I've seen it, you know, really uh, hurt some people because they search for that, you know, that, that, that flow, you that, know, like how, how can I get the juices to yeah, flow back? Yeah, because right. I played this sport of basketball for a long time and uh, Gil has found his path. You know, we was talking about Karan yesterday. He's found his path with the coaching and, and being an author. And for myself is being in a position to help others who deserve it. Mm -hmm. There's so many quality players, so many quality coaches, so many guys that can be in the front office. They don't honestly get looked at for that position. And just through my relationships with people across the league and across just people I play with or, or so forth, but like LeBron Prophet. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Prof, yes. Prof knows the game of basketball. <laughs> Prof is going to be an unbelievable guy in the front office. We argue once a week. Yep. <laughs> and, I, and I think uh, by me getting that position, a guy like Prof will get an a honest opportunity to showcase his talents. And I think that's that's the path I wanna, you know, continue to strive forward and just create easy, create opportunities for other people as well. Well, I think me looking at both y'all, how tough is that adjustment? I mean, you know, people who play, you know, I play college basketball and that was hard to kind of go from being a man on campus to now you gotta figure out your life and kind of start at the bottom. Obviously you guys have successful NBA careers, made a ton of money, kind of have a lot more flexibility and freedom to do what you want. But how tough is it to make the adjustment now when the game stops 
and you got to go into the real world, you know, live your real life. You're not on the road anymore. You got kids. You got to raise a family. You got to figure out your, your next career path. Mine was rough. I, I think mine, because I was, I, I was done before him. So because we're routine, right, yeah. we're routine, we have, like, our, our brains, our body just wants to do something at certain times of the day. So <laughs> I caught myself. A two, it was a two-year thing. Two years, I'll wake up, take my shower, get ready. I didn't want to go to the gym because that's, you know, as soon as we're done, we're like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that no more. I'm not working out no more. So I'll get in a car, put my music on. I'll from Woodland Hills, I'll drive all the way downtown. In traffic, in traffic, drive downtown, drive all the way back. That was our practice time. It's about an hour and a half, two hours get breakfast, take my nap, wake up around, I'll wake up, I go to the movies. That was like, you know, that one o'clock, two o'clock, <laughs> go to the movies, fall asleep. It was like I'm trying to fall asleep in my movie theater. Yeah. So I fall asleep in the movie theater and then come home, take a nap, and then around five to seven, same thing. You did it for two years? Two years. I didn't even realize I was doing it. I was using traffic time to make up for playing and practicing. Yeah. And I was like, yo, what am I doing? <laughs> like, I, it was like, why do you have so many miles in your car? And I'm like, and I had to sit there and think like, what do I do all day? And it was just driving, like I'm driving from Virginia to here. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. I'm just driving in traffic wow. for two hours just, <laughs> just to get the time gone. Yeah. Cause it was that, my body just, it was that nine to, it was like that nine to 11, that five to seven time. I just didn't know how to fill that space up. It, it was horrible. It was different for me. Basketball-wise, I was done. Mm -hmm. And and the thing people here talk to me all the time, like, do you miss playing? I think the thing I do miss is like being in the locker mm -hmm. room. Yeah. Him <laughs> doing jo <laughs> the jokes that you know he used to do with our teammates. But as far as the basketball piece, because I didn't miss any practices. Mm -hmm. I tried my best to play 82 games every year. Did that for 16 years, three years in college, high school. So my, my body and mentally picking up a basketball and just going up and down the court, I was already done. Mm -hmm. I gave it my all. I think you have some players who, not in your situation because you was hurt, but they didn't practice. Yep. They didn't give it their all. So it goes by quickly and when it's over with, they're like, oh man, I still I, got, I still got a little more left in the tank. I didn't tank. have anything left in the tank. But the problem I had was the transition. What am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. As athletes, like you said, we have a routine. Most of us just can't sit at home and not do anything. And I was that one. My dad, my mom and dad both worked, you know, two jobs at a time, never complained. And my dad still to this day just can't sit his ass down. He's always ripping and running. And I think I have that. So on top of just being a parent, I just can't sit at home and just not do anything. I complain all the time with my job. I'm on the road like I'm still playing. I'm like, <laughs> but then I, I love that coming home almost like from a road trip. Trip, trip. I've been gone for like the last four or five <laughs> days. Oh man, I'm at home. Daddy daycare, carpool mm -hmm. lane, all the other stuff. But the basketball aspect, I was done mm -hmm. because I gave it my all. And luckily enough, no major injuries and things of that nature. I still work out to this day, but uh, I knew I gave it my all when it came to practice, when it came to playing, and, and so forth. It was just, what's that next transition yeah. going to be for me? I mean, you look like you can still hoop, to be real. You look like you still go out there. <laughs> my knees and back the other way. <laughs> hey, I already know. I already know. <laughs> so, obviously, you got a, you know, the unique position you went working with the Wizards. How much has the game changed from when y'all were playing to the game nowadays? Uh, the game itself has changed. But like I was telling Gil earlier, I remember in college, we was talking about the first time Michael Jordan came to the practice facility. I remember just in the summertime in college, we had three courts every day. I remember during the season, uh, if we had practice or not, not on game days, but we'll come back late at night, me, Vince, out of Shimon, get up shots. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recall here, he missed a game winner that same shot that he missed, he would come in here one or two o'clock at night, mm -hmm. a thousand times until you made it. The, the, the love of the game, being in the gym, playing 
nonstop, that's kind of changed. And me in the position that I am in, I see that because you can see guys don't have a great feel for the game. So learning from Luke, learning from Coach Smith and, and those great coaches, they taught us about the game of basketball. And now we learned it when we was in high school, you know, college. But now between AAU, you know, college, you can transfer if the coach is getting on you. <laughs> By the time they get to the NBA level, Wes and those guys, they got to re- they gotta teach, teach the game. Mm-hmm. Jamal Moses is a good friend of mine. I had him in uh, Cleveland. And I congratulated him when he got the job, but he was like, Torn, I'm teaching them how to set a proper screen. And he's not talking about rookies. He's talking about guys that have been in the league for two or three years. And I'm just like, you know, we learned that in college. college. Fundamentals mm-hmm. and things of that nature. High so school. the game of basketball has changed. I mean, imagine us playing in, in today's game. Like, I, it was funny, we came down here, and I, I see chairs, there's a whole little <laughs> lounge in there. I was like, how did they get away with this? Where are they taking their shots at before the game? Like, like where's those hundreds and 200, 300 shots at before this game? It was like, yeah, there's a facility. I was like, cool, that's, that's great, the facility down the street. But this is inside the arena. Like, I'm coming from here, getting my sweat, getting my little lather up, heading in there, listening to the coach, and I'm ready to go out there and perform. There's, you can't do that in here. Yeah, for those you can't see, so this half, we got the hoop, we got the nice court. Other half, we got curtains, we got tables set up. You it's know, not the, even a half, though. It's you know, not even a half. Like, you know, two-thirds. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not even a two-thirds. It's like Curry's range. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even step range. Yeah. It's not even step range. <laughs> Good for bigs, though, if they want to get some work in. But for people like yourself, you, you're going you're gonna to be severely limited. But I want to ask y'all both, what does it mean? Y'all back here for throwback night. Gil, it's your first time back here in, what, 12 years? 12 years. What does it mean for both of y'all to be back here in your old stomping grounds looking at this hoop where you put so much work in? I mean, it's, it's, it's really, for me, it's really exciting because, you know, it's like when I left, you know, you have this image in your head of how people perceive you, right? So no. it's like, ah, I don't want to go back there. I'm scared. I, I, I know. It's, I don't, this is the part I don't get. And I'm, I'm, I'm I here got booed, man. Gil. I know it was only like four or five people, you but the, it was, you, it was, it was enough. It hurt. You, <laughs> you, you are the reason that people are Wizards fans. Every time I walk down the street, man, oh, man, I remember you, Karan, and Gil, but like, we, we did our thing. But this is, this guy's the reason why, like, I mean, he had this city on fire. So when he was talking about, he was scared to come <laughs> back, I'm like, you're not making no sense. <laughs> That's what I said. It was, it's that, you know that, what you put, what you, what you imagine? It was just what I was thinking. I was like, "Oh man, they don't, they don't, they don't mess with me." You know, you watch games and it pretend you didn't exist. Like that's what was going in. So I'm like, "Oh man." So I just tried to stay away, watch from afar, watch from afar. So was that in your head or was that? It was real? in my head. Oh, this was, was in my head. head. Yeah. When I got here, I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like me. <laughs> Bro, I tell every, everywhere I go, I'm, I'm on the way here. That's people, yeah, I know like, it was. We that, love no chill. We love Gil. That's yeah. that's all they say. So you remember, I didn't, I didn't really, crazy. but I didn't have a. Goodbye. Okay, so that's you know the I mean? reason. I didn't, yeah. I didn't have a goodbye. It was just like I left, and then we came to one time, six, seven people booed, and I was like, okay. And then I never came back. So it was not like that. The, when I was with Orlando, that was the only time I came back. I, I, I that get That one it. game, and I never came back. I didn't come back with Memphis, and then from there I was retired. But I'm just talking about away from the game of basketball. Listen, listen. Okay, when when I was in LA, the, the DNV people that you know showed me love, like, oh, I was from DC. Yeah, I get that, but you know, just come on. It's in your head, man. It was in my head, it's, it's really. It, was, it, it wasn't that in person. I was like, oh my. Like, I'm, like I'm, I'm excited to, to to for him to experience what it's going to be like later on, because I think he, he he. I know him, <laughs> and sometimes he it goes in one end out the other because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but like I said, this guy. He had this, he, he the reason why these people are Wizards fans. And we got a little bit of love uh, last night and I'm here all the time. So I get to see familiar faces and things of that nature. But it's special for me because not only with Gil and Karan, you know, the special things we did on and off the court. I mean, we got together yesterday. It was just like, we just, yeah. we never missed a beat. Yeah. And like that, that's, that's, the, that's exciting for me because as you get older, you know, you really have an appreciation, not for what you did, the game of basketball, but the people you did it with. And like, 
all of my success, the all-star team going into the playoff was because of him and Karan. I played with, you know, four other teams, but this is like, when they said, like, what team you, you know, Golden State is where we started. Uh, yeah, where and we that's start. ironic, too, because <laughs> I, I had it when he first got in the league, and all of a sudden we went from Golden State, and we found a way to, to like, come together back in D.C., and, like, we had so many special times while we was here. You know, so it's just crazy when you think about, like, when you think about, like, the game and you think about your teammates, right? That our wizard team, when it comes to personalities, mm. when it comes to personalities, just the whole the whole organization as a whole, every from the <laughs> from from, you know, the staff, you well, know, media yeah. guy, we were just all characters. And you can see like around the league that from the 2004 to 2007, a lot of staff members, a lot of people, a lot of players are in the media around this league. So you're just seeing like Brendan Haywood and, you know, uh, Antonio Daniels, all these guys. We have general, we probably have the most general managers. Calvin Booth. Yeah. <laughs> Calvin yeah, Booth. Yeah, we have yeah. the, probably the most general managers. And it all came from this, this three years worth of guys. Just, but that's. <laughs> so, Antoine, you played with Gil, played with Gil in Golden State, saw, saw the young Ricky Gil come into the league. <laughs> Bull. Played with Gil with the Wizards. <laughs> How would you compare Warriors Gill versus Wizards Gill? Whew. On and off the court. Golden State Gill, uh, basketball wise, he was out of control. He had this this speed, he has this quickness. And I don't think he knew then what type of player he can possibly become. Cause he was doing special things. But the one thing that the common denominator was the love for the game. You know, off the court, hey, this it changed it all. <laughs> the only thing that changed off the court, he got more money, he got even crazier. Because was, he was limited as far as what he could do off the court. You mean the car you bought? Yeah, yeah. Man, he had like lamb skin on the, the roof and like, I'm like, what are you doing? I spent all my money. All his money. What kind of car? The Escalade. Escalade. Oh, so I, know, I knew you had the Escalade, but I didn't know you had the, the, the lamb skin and all the flavor. It was 310 motor, yeah, 310 Chris, motor and Chris, Chris, Chris Mills. Because, you know, Chris was on the team too. So he was telling, he used to always tell me, like, you know, Gary Payton got the, uh, I, you know, I'm not, the money didn't match. The money his didn't match. His car cost more than the place he was staying yeah. there at the time. You know, so wow. it's like they got the 300,000. <laughs> they got the three hundred thousand. Gary Payton got eighty million, but everything Chris was saying that he got leather. He got the snake skin on the top. Snake skin. I need pants on the <laughs> top. Then <end. laughs> <laughs> he's not joking. <laughs> but when he got here, he just had more money. He can get the the, the, the pants skin or whatever on the top. But like the talent, man, it was like man, this kid is quick, and like he was just relentless. He didn't care about the moment. You know, he was willing to take that shot. You saw that at an early stage. And it was funny, like, when you left, it was what, two years? Before we, we, we came back. No, one well, year. That's why I was just to make sure that's right. Yeah. yeah. So within that one year, it was like, okay, he's still the same person off the court. That ain't going to change. <laughs> but, like, just, you know, the, the, the focusness that he had. He wanted to be great. I think at Golden State, I am talented. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just going gonna, gonna to figure this thing out. I love the hoop, and that's it. But then we got here, you're like, you know what? I want to be great. You know, Hibachi and Agent Zero, all this other stuff. He always, you know, I think Gil, I tell people Gil was ahead of his time. Basketball player wise, I think like guys like James Harden and, and, and Westbrook, you know, big guards that can like attack and, and stuff like that. He was already doing that. But then also, you know, his brand. Back then, we wasn't thinking about ha having our brand, but he was, uh, he, no. But he was still crazy. I mean, <laughs> before games, he said, no, we was on the computer. Get, uh, it was a uh, poker, poker. Poker, poker, yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Hold up, man, I got, I got to win this. I'm like, <laughs> you got to win this play. Play. <laughs> <laughs> right. Playing poker before the game, but I mean, <laughs> hey, whatever Calvin worked. Booth got me into that. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin Booth. So I was obviously searching YouTube highlights, prepping for this, this episode. So Gil, back in Golden State, I think it was your career high at that point. You dropped 41 mm -hmm. against the Wizards. Mm -hmm. You had 37 in that game. That's how but we got up. Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. But, yeah. but I want to know, for each of y'all, what did y'all love most about the other one's game, and why were you guys able just to work so well together? You know, so what's, what's, what's funny is, you know, I always tell, it's, it's realms, right? 
we didn't clash on the court. Our our styles did not did not clash. Like he's the reason that the like the big man. So I used to do this little hook move when I used to <laughs> set a pick. Yeah. When I used to set a pick. I'll grab the inside of their legs so the guard couldn't scoop, yeah. and it turned me faster. I didn't have to worry about that because he's a pick and pop. Right, so when I had like Brendan and uh, Eton, get out, go, 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 I'm sitting, there. I'm holding, and they're trying to roll. Like, what you rolling for? I ain't passing you this ball. So it's just a, it's it's just the way we played. It, it because you couldn't you couldn't double me, you couldn't hard show. It was like when I did a pick and roll with Antoine, it was a free for all, like. There was no, we're gonna switch. Do you didn't even like what they're doing to these guards now? You didn't, don't even think about that. You even tried to switch on me. I'm, you're in trouble. This is, Antoine can pop all he wants. <laughs> he can pop all he wants. This yeah. big man. So, you know, when, when it was us, that pick and roll, if you even thought about hedging, back to him, right? He's going to shoot the three. He's going to do the little f- floater, dribble. float one, two dribble, and uh, yeah, throw that up. I should love you know, watching so, that floater, you know, man. So it was basically like, like we had this, this two-man bond inside of our offense that, like, all I had to do is just look, like, coach will call something, and I look at Cap, Cap be like, come on, yeah. all right, <laughs> pop it. And we, so we had, like, we had our offense, but that becomes the studying of the game where, where when we say they don't have a feel for the game, it's because we understood we had this whole Princeton offense. Inside that Princeton offense, we had our old Golden State offense yeah. that coach did not know about. <laughs> but it was just a look. We just like we we had our own plays that came from two years in what's the name that we didn't even have to call out. We just look each other here, do one of those. All right, come off, throw it back, and we just had our own little thing going on. That, but that was the IQs and you know the just playing with each other, understanding the game. And I think that's where the frustration comes from. It's like, we're seeing things in this game. It's like, what are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's like, this game is so easy. Like some of you guys with your talent, y'all can actually average 40. If you understood this game, the way y'all playing, the way y'all have this freedom to chuck as many threes as you want. Yeah. You can, no big man. No, there's no shack down there to no. keep y'all out to give you those first no two hits. No chucking you as you're coming through the lane. You can free fall. Oh, there's man. no chuck. You remember, like, you come and die and you had to without chuck. you touching me? Man. And that's the frustrating part. It's like, ah, y'all. Yeah. I, I keep averaging 31 with all this extra <laughs> freedom y'all have. <laughs> So, Anson, I got to ask you, man, you know, during your era, the league was stocked full of just some amazing forwards. So, so who was that guy that you had the most respect for because you knew every night you were going to have to bring it and just play at a high level? Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. Okay. It it was, I just knew because other bigs were either too slow, I could use my quickness, I could pop out, or they try to muscle me up with the short physical guys, not get in the paint, use angles and things of that nature, but... Those two guys, night in and night out, because they were so long, they can they were long enough. To, I try to use my quickness. Tim Duncan was solid. It wasn't no backing down. And they both, when I got on the perimeter, they can move well on the perimeter as well. And then also, they were smart. You know, we're not just going to let him shoot the ball. We're going to make him work on defense too. Mm-hmm. And uh, those two guys were night in and night out. Every time we went to San Antonio, they came here. KG was in Minnesota at first, then he was in Boston. His motor knighted, he's talking trash and this and that. And like, I just knew like, Gil, you're gonna have to help me out. Yeah. <laughs> <He's like>, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can just send a tell you like, hey, I need help too, Tony yeah, Parker. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, too. Get, hey, Kevin Garnett gets to talking, he looking at me, I'm like, shut up, yeah. shut up, man. Don't like, talk to my cap like that. <laughs> pick and roll, let's pick and roll this man. We go, because it was that thing that, you know, it was like, you know, as teammates, you know, you know, you, you, you know your, your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and you try to, you know, you try to fill them in. So, you know, when Kevin Garnett gets to go, because he didn't talk. Yeah. So when Kevin Garnett gets to I start talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? I start trying to irritate, focus on me. And he didn't do it, but making him mad. <laughs> and he, just get his ass. I'm like, <laughs> this should just play ball, but like. My bad. I, and I the thing that I like about it, too, he recognized that. He like, oh, I got to find a way to make it easy for him. So he'll get in there. So it's just like we played off each other like that. But those two guys my whole career, mm-hmm. plus two years at uh, Carolina with Tim Duncan. But like, I have the utmost respect for those guys because 
night in and night out. They played, they gave it that all, and I knew man, I really had to, I, it was going to be a long night. So those are the two guys I think that really gave me the most problems. This episode of No Chill is brought to you by The Ridge Wallet. Now that Thanksgiving is over, it's time to get your holiday shopping started, and you can't go wrong with The Ridge Wallet. I mean, seriously, who wouldn't love a Ridge Wallet for the holiday season? It holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. The wallets have over 50,000, yes, you heard that right, 50,000 five-star reviews. Now that's quality. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. This thing will be guaranteed for your entire life. Now that's a deal that is too good to pass up. In fact, the Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. But let's be real, you're gonna love it, so you're not gonna send it back. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets. If you or one of your loved ones needs your Ridge wallet, make sure you go to ridge.com slash no chill and use code no chill. So you talk about KG, we gotta talk about that 95 McDonald's game. Yeah. I mean, you know, some consider that the best game, you know, Mickey D's history with just that roster yourself, KG, Vince Carter, God, Sham God, yeah. Marbury. Chelsea Bullets. Yeah, Ch I mean, when you look. Paul Pierce. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. look <laughs> back at that time. Did y'all know. Is that Was Gregory on that team, too? Gregory. From Kansas? Jalum. Yep. McCoy was on that team. Jelani was on there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. When we, did y'all know <laughs> then how successful you guys were going to be at that next level? Was it just that level of respect in there? Who was kind of the big at, dog coming through At that there? particular time, we didn't. Because, you know, Vince was the second coming of. MJ because it's that athletic ability. Kevin going that particular time, like that's when he was coming out of high school. He was going straight to the pros. He was just Kevin Garnett throughout his career, that's how he was in high school. I remember playing him at AAU and just like this kid just skinny as on <laughs> what, but he's long and just going hard. And the thing I respect about that class, Tyrone Lou was in that class. Every time we see each other, nine five. Was it KG? <laughs> I mean T. So y'all had that level God of respect saying now, God. Yeah. Like, Because it's funny because at, at, at that particular time, we didn't know what the future, you know, hold, but, you know, we all played in the league and we all had that respect for each other. It's just like, still to this day, I see God say I'm God in, oh, in Dallas. Oh, that is the 95, yes. Squad. That, yeah, that Squat. is. When you're talking about, you know, college success and NBA yeah. success, 95 is the actual. I'm telling you, we that is the actual best team. I mean, it's hard not to look at that roster. See, I thought that whenever someone said 95, I always thought it was the, in, the who came into the draft in 95. No, but it's it the was high, high school. school. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yep, it's a high school class. So obviously, I mean, you you a UNC guy. We got to talk about North Carolina. Yeah. You know, I, for my money, second best college program of all time behind UCLA. But you behind know, I'm biased. Arizona. You don't have enough natties. <laughs> <laughs> Which I said on two, three. What was the last time? Well, most of y'all daddy was back before we was even born. I don't know, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come they on, still man. Cute, man. They still cute. You sound like, like man. It's, it's been a minute. minute. Yeah. <laughs> it was '95. Yeah. Last time they won a national championship. <laughs> but but want to go back to your North Carolina days. Obviously, you got to play with Dean Smith, legend. But going into your junior year, your final season there, October, y'all y'all getting ready to gear up for the season. Y'all got a, a squad that looks like it can make some noise. Dean Smith abruptly retires. So I just want to know from you, like, what was that experience like from you, just the shock of that moment with this guy who had been this mainstay, been there 30 plus years, kind of just being like, look, I had enough. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be here. He hit y'all with the it magic. It was tough because the previous year we lost to Arizona. Yeah. We lost to. Um, oh, that's when they made that run yeah, with Bibby and Miles Simon. Yeah, Miles Simon. You know. I ain't don't know nothing. <laughs> but like, um, and I just remember, you know, we lost to those guys. Me and Vince was debating where we're going to come back. And we kind of looked at each other and we was like, you know what? I think we have unfinished business. One more year, let's try to, you know, bring a championship because how it is in college, man. You know, you're young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know you nothing. Got the city, you got the city in your palm. Man, we went to the final four and we, we almost that close. We come back together one more year, we're going to figure this thing out. And I just remember that, that summer, everybody did both sessions of summer school. We worked out, we played. We was focused. Mm -hmm. I remember like it was yesterday because every year we do the mile run. A mile, you run as fast as you can. 
you go back, we have our meeting, let's go. That was like our conditioning test we had to pass. And uh, just like the, the previous year, Coach Smith was like, reach out back at the locker room, you know, I want to talk. And I'm like, all right. So we sat down and he's sitting there talking like, you know, I always told myself before the season, if I didn't feel like I had it, you know, that I, I might hang it up. And I'm like, man, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's, you know, still talking. I'm like, this man about to, he's about to retire, what? <laughs> And then he was like, you know, start crying, tears start coming out of his eyes. I said, so for us as 17, 18 year olds, mm. you have this, this, you know, we all in. This is the coach. You know, we, we got to get a national championship for him. And all of a sudden, before we even start our journey, mm -hmm. he's like, I don't have it in me to coach you guys. So it was the shock of hearing that. But we also knew Coach Guthridge, who was a longtime assistant, he was going to take over. And for us, it was kind of like, you know, let's do this for Coach Gut and Coach Smith still. Because we still had the same team. That's when Brendan, he was a freshman. Yeah. But we still had Ed Cole and myself, Okalaja, rest his soul, uh, Mac and those guys. We was just focused. And that whole year, we went six deep. We rotated. <laughs> I didn't start one game. The next game, Vince didn't start. The start Shimon didn't start. And we just... I mean, we, we rolled throughout the season the whole time. So it was just like dealing with the shock of. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. You said you, you didn't start a game? Yeah, we rotated. That's how good that six was? That there were six starters? But, but you player of the year, sir. Are you taking, are you salty at all? Like, wait a minute. Man, hold we, on. That's what I'm saying. We were so focused. Y'all just wasn't even the, tripping. The end Locked game in. was winning that. And Gutterwood got his ass cussed out. <laughs> he got his ass cussed out trying end, to sell me out. <laughs> if you, you talk to Shabon, like, Shabon, like, man, I, I'm a senior. I, I don't know why I'm not. But, like, <laughs> that, that's, I didn't care, man. I just, I did whatever. So, like, every sixth game, I wouldn't start. Wow. Nah, but like, and it worked. I think we maybe lost like three games that year. So, but man. did any of y'all try to talk Coach Smith out of it? Because looking at that man, roster, that's what Coach Smith but like, what are you doing? Don't no retire. But I'm just saying, look, you don't even got to do shit. Just be here. Just hang on the bench. We'll figure it out. We, we got it. I, I guess sometimes when it's when the love is not, the, was it the love? I don't think it was the love. He just said he didn't have like the, 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 he didn't the fail passion you and like the, practice every day, this and that. And like, he said he didn't have the energy to give, he said he always told himself he'll reassess it right before the season, which was kind of odd to me because yeah. normally you'll wait, like Coach Williams did, he waited after the season and made sure that Hubert, you know, took the torch. But he would say, I was, I would always reevaluate it right before we start the season. And I always told myself, if I, didn't, and I, I didn't feel like I had it, mm -hmm. it was time for me to retire. He didn't have that, that, yeah. that energy but like going a, into the season. A couple of years later, I talked to Coach Williams, and me and him just talking. He said, you know, I talked to Coach Smith, and he was like, you know, the one thing he regret is that he did it too soon. Because you got to think about it. These guys have been coaching, speaking engagement, mm -hmm. worrying about their players for like 30, 40 years, and all of a sudden, you just sitting around with wife and she like, Dean, oh, yeah, yeah. get the laundry. He was like, oh, uh, I'm so used to like yeah, yeah, yelling yeah, yeah. Antoine touch the line. And he was like, that was the one thing that he, when he talked to Coach Smith, he was like, Coach Smith felt like he retired too soon. Yeah. And when I talked to Coach Williams, he was still going. And then I saw him in the Final Four. I said, Coach, he was like, Tony, it was time. He said, I didn't have the ear. He said, I kept repeating myself over and over and over. And it, it just, it wasn't translating. So he was like, he, he felt he was getting outdated. Yeah. That's the thing. Hubert now, yeah. Yeah. Hubert got him. They listen. He can, he can yeah. relate yeah. to these guys. And I don't have the patience. I'm like, but like he can relate <laughs> to him and, he, and, and it, it works. <laughs> but that was the yes. thing, Coach Smith. I was like, right before we started the season. But we was focused, man. We got to the Final Four. That's, cra that's crazy where he, he recognized where his, his flaw was. That yeah. I don't. Because most coaches are still most like, hey. Listen, I, I had I've been it. doing like, it you know. for the 30 or 40 years. Y'all going to figure this yeah, yeah, gonna, out. Gonna figure. This is a different general. This is a different. It's scary, man. Like, these guys, it's, 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 it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is. But Analytics. And the thing about, I guess sometimes, too, the older generation is not able to adapt. Because we talk about, like, guys that played 30 or 40 years before us. They didn't. 
Well, they, yeah, did they look at y'all the same That's way? That's what I'm saying. No, yeah, of course. Sure they all, the, all, the older's always. They seem super salty. No, yeah, all, the older's but that's always. Just, you know, yeah, and, yeah. But I don't want to listen to a bunch of dudes. They, like, they have shoot-arounds because they were alcoholics at night. <laughs> they, they need to wake them up. <laughs> like, they don't They want to forget that was their era, that, that because they drunk and it was just alcoholics that they had put the shoot-arounds in to wake them up. It was a different never, time, though, Gil. They, they, they traveling on janky buses. I, but, they but that's what I'm saying. I don't want to listen to their opinion, though. That's <laughs> okay, what I'm saying, because okay. y'all was some alcoholics. <laughs> you know, y'all some alcoholics. And y'all was drinking during the season, so I really don't care what your thought process was. Those were the times, though. Because I used to question, this is what I used to question about um, shoot-arounds. And I'm saying, all right, we come to shoot You're waking me up, we come to shoot-around, we go over these plays. When we get to the gym at 5 or 7 o'clock, Doing the same. you really think these guys, us, remember <laughs> the game plan? You think we retained that information? The that, like, certain guys did, but, like, we'll, watch, the, we'll do the scouting report. It was certain guys you knew, do not let them go left, because yeah. they get left, he's going to do the... Yeah. But the young... Yeah, young, younger, younger you do younger than me, like, because you got to remember, I'm studying, so I'm watching the film, we're yeah. doing it, I talk, hey, so what is this guy... The, are young? They get that scout report. They look at it like that, throw it on the throw ground. It your, throw it on the ground. And but then they you don't... go to court, it said not to go it's left. left. What said oh, not to go left? Oh, you definitely read the scout report. You but it's it. like, so that information that we did this morning has no bearing on the game. You're just waking these guys up who party last night. So, you know, like what Wes does, I'm like, that is the smart way. Because they can retain it. You they can retain, yeah, it. return you it. I mean, uh, retain yeah. it, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and then right into the game. Well, these kids are different nowadays, anyway, with social media. We have video games, but they got it on a whole yeah. other level. Yeah. They can talk to each other while they're playing. But they don't. I'm just saying, <laughs> video game. When, when they're on the games, they talking to each other. But they don't. <laughs> but they don't. They just got so many more distractions where I feel like it's so hard to lock in that they got to they gotta do it immediately because Well, that everything is accessible right there in the game. I mean, you, you see They can it. watch highlights. They, like, my, my, my boys now, like, I watch, got up every, NBA on uh, NBC. Mm-hmm. I watch the games. I watch Showtime. Now you can sit there and just watch highlights on your phone. You're not really watching – you know, how did James create that space or how did, like, Embiid, you know, fu- they're just watching the highlights and just seeing, like, they're getting everything just like that. We had to sit there and watch from start to finish. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I still enjoy it to this day, but, like, my, my boys are sitting there like, like, you used to watch the games. What are you doing now? But everything is so accessible right there. Yeah, I don't want to watch highlights because highlights make a person look invincible. Yep. Right? You, you watch a, you're watching a highlight of a player – and you got to play him. You just finished watching this highlight reel. He becomes Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I want to watch the whole game, right? And it's like, or just the bad yeah, shit. Yeah, he only had 16 <laughs> points, bro. Those time, you know, he was on Sports Center five, yeah. five spots. That's 10 of his points, man. Nobody care about that no more. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you're just looking at highlights, he looks like he scored 60 that night. When that stat sheet only six, and I want to look at the game like, yeah. oh, he's. Look oh, at the low lights only. Like, yeah, yeah. you trash. You ain't got shit for me. Like, I, we watched a lot of we watched a lot of film. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're on the plane. We're we're on the bus ride. We're watching film. We're watching. We're watching what a player can do and what he can't do. Trying to figure out angles. Like, you can. Like, no matter what the the the, the scouting report says, right? No matter you know, I know if you're scared of me. I know if you're going to, if you give me too much respect. I know before, like, if this guy comes in a game, even though he don't score, he's going to be a problem for me, right? So, you, you know, you're trying to play this game within the game, and I don't see that anymore. Because I'm like, I, I can see, yo, bro is scared of you. Why are you, why are you not going at that man? Like, you can see him trembling. Why are you not going at that man? What, what are y'all doing here? And they don't, they, they're not, it seems like they're not sensing that. Got to hit you one last North Carolina aspect. Obviously, MJ, some people's goat. Yeah, some people. Some people. He he, he's the goat to you. Goat. He's the goat to you. Yeah, he's not the goat to you. It's in today's game, I'm talking about <laughs> all, all game. Listen, listen. Put MJ in today's game. Put MJ but, back in okay, that game. So, like, I had this, I had this discussion, right? And I said, y'all got to remember, four or five years from now, right? LeBron will finish all his stats. Right? Okay. Ten years from now, the kids that are about 10, 15, 20 right now, okay. they don't know MJ. 
I'm not talking about they, they know. know Jordan, but what I'm saying is you got to remember, think about us. Look at the generation that fights for MJ. It's basically 35 to like 50, 60. Okay. There's a group after 60 that thinks Julian Irving yeah. is the best Dave player Dr. ever. J. They Dave don't Dr. even J. they don't even want to even talk about Michael Jordan. Okay. Then you got Kareem's group. Like, it depends on what group you talk. Like he has the most points in NBA history. Well, well me and you talk. We're Jordan. Me and you talk. We're Jordan. That's all that matter. Hey, bro, bro's right there. I, 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 we're, we're, I we're, we're, we're MJ. That's why I said it's like it's just a it's just a group, and that group is the media. But stuff. think about think about know, the media. Think about that, what MJ now. Who like Braun, Kobe. All those guys wanted to be like MJ. So I mean, like, but but, but eventually, eventually, when eventually, I get it, like, but that's what I said, eventually, when when the footage is all done and said and done, right? Twenty years from now, they won't know they won't. who MJ. They're gonna know his shoes. They're not gonna know the legend that aura. I got yeah, because I, like I had to sit there and listen to someone talk about Dr. J, and I'm sitting here like. No. It was like when he came in, he was a rock star. There was no TVs. You had to come in there. I mean, the parking lot, he was a ladies' man, the outfits, and this and this. And I was like, bro, I he couldn't Dr. even dribble a lot. I was out scouting. I saw Dr. J. When Dr. J walked, man, he got his own theme. Man. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, man. But there's a group. I'm like, man, Dr. J. Man, I see like, it. Like, even in the big three, even, even in the big he three, smooth. the way he walks, you're <laughs> like, yo, bro's different, bro. That's, that's, in the, he's the, but there's that, his, I got his era doesn't even consider they they don't even consider MJ. And it's like it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's like <laughs> it's like but Dr. Me and you were in agreement. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay yeah. So what was it like your first time meeting MJ? It was crazy because like I was telling you uh earlier, you know, my freshman year, before the season got started, we were doing pickup games. Uh we've been doing it all week and uh this particular time, they were like, Y'all make sure y'all ready to play pickup at a certain time. We like all right, you know, we, we've been doing it. They changed the time, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody had to be there. We're like, what's going on? So we're getting up, we stretching, we're about to play. They said, hold up, we got one more player coming in. Here come MJ in with his trainer. Man, we're in there like, man. Well, we stretching. <laughs> it's, it's game six of the finals. Let's get ready. But the thing I remember is that the intensity of that pickup game, was right, it was like playoff game. Mm. And that is what he demanded when he was practicing pickup games or whatever. Man, I'm setting screens, I'm acting like I'm Scottie Pippen going down, doing all, <laughs> but like it was like, this is the guy I grew up watching. He went to the same university I went to. I mean, he come in there with that walk and things of that nature, the Carolina shorts on, I was just like, you know, I, I finally made it. I, I got I can't up now, I got <laughs> So I'm about that boy. I, mean, I remember like he was playing his day. Vince had to go on him. <laughs> so I don't want no problem. And Vince, you know, he, he let Vince know he was a freshman. But uh, but it was just it was so cool to like see your idol and to have that common ground as far as like we both went to the same university. Mm -hmm. And it was special because we played him when we was at Golden State. We was going off that game. Yeah, that's what that's that's I what came down, he <laughs> shot something yelling. He like, Tall Hill, calm down. I said, All right. <laughs> this ain't nothing the whole time. But that's the, the amount of respect that, you know, he 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 walked with man, just his life. And to experience that at a young age and then to finally get to that level in the NBA and have the opportunity to play against him, like he's definitely the, the greatest to ever lace like, him up. You, you can tell by energy. Like if you ever if you're ever around MJ or just any high level, you know Tiger Woods or Barry Bonds, those type of people, you can actually feel the radiance of them. You know there there's just something's going on there. Like you can just feel that they they moving at a different frequency. With MJ, everything like I don't I don't care what it is. Y'all trying to walk out you know walk out this door. He gonna try to beat you to the door. Yeah. You know. He's just, <laughs> He's like, just one of those. <laughs> playing golf one time yeah. at one of the tournaments. And, uh, and they say, yeah, I'm about to get up there, you know, getting ready. He said, 50,000 down the middle of the fairway. I said, oh, no, I, 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 I'm not playing this game. This, this, is not, this is not what I'm doing. This is a charity event. I am not betting on. 
And it's just like, you, yes. competition no matter what. No matter what it is. And I did like, not take that swing. Yeah, I waited till they took their swing and they got out of there. Because, I mean, he he is very competitive. But, like, like I said, to, to experience that at a young age and also to make it on the level, you know, with this guy. And we playing against him and, you know, Golden State was rocking that night. And I'm yelling, like, yeah, it would be Mike. Mike said, man, calm down. I said, all right. So, so I got to ask, a lot of people look at that time with the Wizards for MJ as a knock. For me, I'm like, wait a minute, this man's 37. Oh, That's what I'm saying. He's 37, 38 doing this. He averaged 20. You know what I'm saying? That's MJ to me. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so when you guys got to see that firsthand, obviously he's him on the tail end of his career, but how much respect for his game did y'all still have at that point? All the respect because to, to, to be at that age, in that stage of his life, it lets you know how much he loved the game of basketball. If me and Gil, if our body will allow us, we would still try to be out there on the NBA level competing against the greats. And for Mike to be able to do that every game, I remember that year, like it was a soul, it was like a, you know, traveling with the Beatles. I mean, everybody wanted to see this guy mm -hmm. play. And, you know, I couldn't only imagine being that age, still going out there dropping 20, 22 points a game. It's just an attest to, like, you know, the gift that he had because what he, what he had throughout his career was special and then still be able to retire once, retire twice, and then come back and, and get an organization that was the laughing stock of the league and try to, like, lift it back up and, like, bring some respectability, which he did. It was unbelievable because this man was balling. And for me to be out there guarding him and stuff like that, at that particular stage, I mean, it was it was awesome because you always want to dream about playing against your idols. And I remember, you know, we had the NBA Combine getting ready for the draft. They played Utah, and I got the opportunity to see the NBA Finals live. And I'm like, you know, this is what it's all about. You know, game one of the finals in Chicago, Mike is playing uh, Utah, and I'm like, I got to find a way to, to, to get to this level. I was fortunate enough to do it for 16 years and so forth, but he's the reason why not only myself, but a lot of us gravitated to the game of basketball. We wanted to have swag. We wanted to, you know, wear our shoes a certain way and things of that nature. We wanted to put on a show and it was all because of Mike. What, what, what was Mike's best year that you say? What was the one we have? What, 37, 35, whatever? No, that wasn't the best Mike. What was the best Mike? From like bucket 90, getting? 90, the 93 Mike, 96 Mike, which one? That was first one? three, Pete? Ooh, or the second one. Post baseball, matter. post baseball Mike, Space Jam, post Space Jam Mike right, was also. So whatever Mike you, you name, in 2001 when we played him, that's the Mike I scored 41 <laughs> on, all right? <laughs> That's the mic I scored 41 on. That's the mic that was out there when I was playing. I, was the, I didn't see Wizards. I see Michael Jordan. Oh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was giving 41 to. Oh, so man. let's talk about y'all time here, man. 2004, you come through, Gil, you were already, when y'all came together, or you no, were already, you was already before, here. Yeah. So you, you, you was kind of the big dog at that point, but you were known as no. the Gil Whisperer. You, uh, no, we still had Jerry that stack out. Like, what's so funny is that oh, first right, yeah. that first year. But was, you got the bag though. Yeah, but that first year was a little rough because it was the reason that we went for uh, a stretch four is because me and Larry was having a rough time getting in that lane because we had two bigs that sat down there. Yeah, you know, in that offense, you know, you got a big and a big. It was like, ooh, <laughs> we need <laughs> we need some open space here, people. But just want to talk about about the big three. You two, Karan Butler. You know, we talk about the modern NBA. Everybody talks about the Celtics big three. They talk about the Heatles, all that well, stuff. Hold on, hold on. We, we had a big three first. That's, but that's what I'm, no, that's what I'm was, getting it to. It was me, Larry Hughes, and Antoine. That was the original okay. big three. And then Larry left. And then it was the big two. And then someone, Karan, stepped up. To, <laughs> okay, Karan. That's, where, cause you got, that's what I said. We, Larry was like, so instead of my first all-star, that actually would have been Larry's. But Larry had broke his yeah, thumb. I remember yeah. that, yep. Larry broke his thumb, and I had to, I was, I got to score more, right? So I ended up making an all-star. Um, remember, he signed that big old deal in Cleveland. In Cleveland. So when we made the trade and um, Karan came here, Karan was coming off the bench. So he wasn't even supposed to be a starter. And his will, his, his determination is what got him into that, 
that starting position. And then he's like, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I am part of this big three. There ain't no, there ain't no big two no more. It's just it's three of us. I'm like, all right, Karai, this is three of us now. <laughs> but between the three, y'all, it feels like y'all had the most success in your career during during those time frames. Mm-hmm. But injuries, I mean, you dealt with a lot of shit. But how special do y'all feel like comparatively? Because it's not a big three that's going to get love from the mainstream. But when you just look at what y'all were out there doing. It, you know, it's it's it's. We didn't really get the. It's like we just we just poked our we just poked our heads out, but we were so strong. We we came on the scene so strong for the first two years. Like we didn't even really get to really know each other each other yet. You know what I mean? And that's how impactful we were. We was like, two years. Yeah. Like people when people think about we was number one seed until we had the injuries that year. Yeah. Yeah. Like we was like, but that's how impactful we were in basically a hundred, two hundred games, you know. Um, but it, it showed you how great we were because when I got hurt, they still carried all star, all star. You know what I mean? And that's that that showed you that man, you know, these three were special, you know. And and we all survived. It was like, you know, like the Kevin Durant, Curry, and and Clay. That's how we played. We played. We didn't play in each other's space, so there was no, man, that man on the elbow just like I'm on the elbow. <laughs> like, we didn't have that, you know what I mean? Everyone had their own realm, and we perfected it. I think the only regret that I had is that it wasn't, we wasn't together a lot longer. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing that's difficult is because we did have some special times, and like I said, we had this city rocking. Every night we knew that we could compete and win a game. I think it was difficult, whether it was injuries, um, and then Karani and them getting traded and things of that nature. We, we felt like we never really got that opportunity to like really showcase. I think if we was injury free and another three or four years playing at that level, we could have really done some special things. But we didn't get the opportunity to do that. I think that's the yeah. toughest thing. Yeah, you know, especially when you're trying to build a team, you're trying to figure out, you know, who meshes what we need, and I think um, when we lost Jer- uh, Jared, Jared, yeah. Jared, when you know, even though we, you know, it's so funny, even though we was rocking that next year, because that was the next yeah. year after Jared left, yeah. but yeah. you know, Jared put a whole another element into he our was, team. It's intangible, man. He could defend, the, didn't need the ball, well, like he did. It's all like it was the little yeah, things. it was you all the little player. things yeah. that you know, like if we're playing KG. And, you know, Jared was... Get him, Jared. Jared, go. <laughs> Jared to go from Wally Zerbiak yeah. to him, and then if, I, if Hudson's killing me, he hey, go he, get Hudson. He texted like, me yesterday. He said, it ain't no big three without the little the two. two. Yeah. <laughs> the, the little really, two? That's what he used to call himself, the little two. Him and B. B. Him and B. Woods. Yeah. But, you know, B, like, so he was the four in our offense. Karan was the three. Jared was the shooting guard. Yeah. It's wild to think about. You know what I mean? But, that, but, but you know, on defense, depending on how we played. Like, I remember one game, this man went from Yao Ming. Yeah. He went from Yao. He had to guard Yao Ming, Tracy McGrady, and um, Austin in the same game. Yeah. Also started getting some shots. Like, hey, man, man don't get him. <laughs> never <laughs> complain. <laughs> get his job. Hey, I mean, it's just, and that's the type of, you know, teammates you want. Mm-hmm. But, like, people like that don't get enough credit. Yeah. You know, it was the big three, but we had guys like, to us, B. Wood defensively, mm-hmm. he was ide- he was talking to us on the court. Twang get over. I mean, that, it was a lot of help that we had. Of course, yeah, was, we get, you know, all the recognition got- and stuff like that because we put up the points and stuff, but we had the intangibles, guys that made it easy for us to go out there and just have fun and, you know, take all the credit. But like B. Wood, Jared Jefferson and those guys, I mean, they made it easier for us because no way I'm going to go down there and guard KG and then you want me to come up here and do all this other stuff. Like, Jerry, get him. <laughs> Didn't complain. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, you got to buy me a drink. I said, I got you, you got buddy. buy me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we had to shoot around. <laughs> That's why we had to shoot around. Players like him. Like, two more questions. You had to meet, you seen Jerry. <laughs> Jerry was turned to, he's probably the most legendary <laughs> guest we had. Other than Vernon Maxwell, just in terms yeah. of turned up again. <laughs> Yeah, you probably shouldn't have had the beverages out and all that <laughs> stuff, but funny, funny dude. So two more questions for you. you Got to talk about, you know, your time with the Lakers. Really Kobe's last peak season before he ruptured his Achilles. I think he was averaging like 27 that year. Seems like everybody has a Kobe story. I know y'all done played together a long time, yeah. but but you got a Kobe. Like, what's your Kobe story if you got to look back on y'all time together? Man, the thing I, 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 I never understood how people 
didn't get Kobe. If you love the game of basketball, you came to practice every day, the best teammate. And I remember our lockers were, was right next to each other. And this is a funny story. Uh, we on the plane, and he doing this. I'm like, Jamo, come here. I'm like, oh, I did now. <laughs> he said, look, man, when you out there, you know, I, I got blinders on. I don't see them but the basket. If you open, yell my name or say something. I'm looking at the film. I say, Kobe, there's four guys on you. What you mean? You, 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 you. I don't see them at the basket. And no lie, the next game, I still, yo, yo. I mean, I had like almost 28 that, 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 that game. But that's, that's who he was. I'm sitting there like, there's four guys on you. You talking about you don't see nobody but the basket. But like, he, I mean, he was just, he was intense. But I was fortunate enough to play with Gil, LeBron, and Kobe. And to me, I played with Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki. I played with Shaq, so many like Hall of Famers. I've been blessed because every guy I played with, I mean, it just made the game so much easier for me. His work ethic, his work ethic and Kobe work ethic are hand in hand. I remember the first day training camp, I'm always the first one in the building. I get there like nine o'clock. I think practice starts around like 11. I walk in. He's walking off the court just drenched in sweat. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, man, he's been since 5 o'clock. Mm-hmm. First day of training camp. Mm-hmm. That's when we had two a day. Yeah. <laughs> 5 o'clock, I'm going hard, <laughs> doing moves. I'm like, and that's the type of person, that's the type of player that he was. And the toughest thing for me, because we all do it, we take our kids to practice, mm-hmm. you know, we then support them. And for that to happen, I mean, it just – I remember like it was yesterday, but like for me it was, I played with one of the greatest to ever play the game. My locker was next to him, just a fly on the wall. That particular year, man, Steve Nash got hurt. He had to be our point guard. He was average like 10 or 12 assists a game. Like whatever you need him to do, same thing with him, the same thing with Bron. Like they will find a way to get it done. No excuse whatsoever. And for me, it was a pleasure just that one year and I think I earned this respect from just our battles we had throughout the other 15 years or whatever. But, I mean, he was like, he was that guy. I mean, he was special, man. And I, I had a ball just, like I said, we, we had like a little bond. But that, that, that one year, I was just like, I see what, this, this, what made this guy great. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. We know why he didn't get along with a lot of teammates, right? It's because... They, Every player in this league don't <laughs> they don't want to be great. Yeah, you know, and 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 they not they but not, not really great. Like they don't they don't want to work. Come in and work they exactly. Wanna, like you'd be that's what the, you'd be so surprised that in a in a league of what, what we got about four hundred, maybe a hundred. As crazy what as crazy as he was off the court when we out between these lines, it was a whole different cat. Like I, I was telling him, I said before b- before he came, when I was here every day trying to figure out my game, I didn't see not one teammate, and I'm here. I was in here yeah. all day, every day, <laughs> staff members every day. I didn't see I didn't see many teammates. You know what I mean? Because you got to remember, they, you know, just like I tell my kids at home, like yo, team practice is team practice. Yep. That's not how you get better. If everyone team practice, why ain't everybody in an NBA? <laughs> I said, you have to do, you have to put, your, your shots count after you leave practice. Yep. What are you doing? So if I'm in practice and coach says, all right, we're going to do 300 shot, shots, right? We all did 300 shots together. After we're one. even. Yeah. Right? I need to, my 300 shots count when everyone goes home. Yep. You know what I mean? And I don't think players really grasp that understanding. So you wanted two players in NBA history to score more than 20,000 career points and not be in the Hall of Fame. I think Think about the Hall of Fame that people don't realize. It's not just NBA Hall of Fame. It's your entire basketball career. You're college player of the year. Obviously, all the success you had in North Carolina, success you had in the league. Do you feel like you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Is that something you think about, or, or are you just kind of cool with, with, with everything? You know what? I've always, and this is who I am. If it happens, of course, I'm ecstatic. Um, but, like, people – you know, come up to me like, man, you should be in the Hall of Fame, this and that. So just to hear people believe that I should be in there is gratification for myself. Um, 
that's just my personality. What we doing when you get in? <laughs> and what we do when we get in? Is it like old like, days? No, <laughs> like no old, old days. days. No. <laughs> Shit, I can't relate. Yeah. The old days. <laughs> but man, I mean, I've been blessed. And now that I'm able to sit back and just, you know, just think about all the things that I accomplish as on the individual level, also with the Wizards at the team level, with my teammates. You know, if it happens, man, believe me. I'm gonna wait, wait, is Ray Allen in there? Ray Allen's in the already? Is Ray Allen in all? Yeah. Ray Hill. And not not even to name names, but do you look, because my pop, same thing. He, he you know, he he's been on the finalist list a couple of times, hasn't gotten in. He's kind of cool and at peace with it. But, you know, when we're having these conversations, like, wait a minute, if these dudes are in, then shit, there ain't no way I shouldn't be in. I never I never look at it like that. I, everybody is different. Only thing I can say is, you know what? I gave it a mo- I gave it my all. You know, when it's time to practice, I was in on the court. You might not like the way I played the game. I might not have been that exciting or whatever, but I'm happy with leaving it all on the court. And if it happens, you me and Gil are going to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pulling up, too. I'm pulling oh, up. Yeah. I'm going to try and get on the plus one. I'm trying to be the plus one. <laughs> man, so we appreciate you, man. man. Thank I you for taking the time man. to do it. Also, got to thank the Wizards again for letting us use the facility, rocking out, whole crew, everybody here. This has been another episode of No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. We'll be back with more very soon.